and welcome. I'm Richard McCann. This is Driven, the journey to success. And I'm so thrilled that you join me here for my first drive with no other than Stephen Robinson. He's waiting outside. He's one hell of an inspirational individual. And I'm going to let him introduce himself. He's uh, just making his way. Steve, hello, hello, Hi, hello. Welcome to How Drive. Let's go for a drive. While we uh, uncover your inspirational journey to success. You okay? I'm in, yep. You're in. in. Good. Let's go for it. So, Steve, we met 18, 19 years ago at Salsa. What on earth were you doing at Salsa? Learning, learning to dance Salsa. And I was learning to dance Salsa because I wanted to really increase my social circle because I'd split up with a girlfriend that I'd been with for a lot of years. And I thought, this is a good idea to meet new people. So that's what I was doing. Same salsa, as you, really, wasn't salsa it? Salsa with one arm. Yes, I was single at the time. And I remember seeing you thinking, what is he doing? He's got his arm missing. So uh, so you lost your arm. How old, were you? How old were you when you lost your arm? I was 18 when I lost my right arm. And I lost it on this field just here. This field here. Incidentally, or interestingly, just we just picture from your house. This was my house, or this was my street, all those years ago before we lost my mum, obviously, uh, in tragic circumstances. But your incident was also tragic. You lost your arm on this field behind here. What what happened? I had a mid-air collision with a guy who thought he could jump over the top of me, and I didn't even know he was there, but he, he couldn't make the jump, and instead he landed on top of me, and his foot peg ripped my arm off there oh. and then, and then the motorbike went into my, chile, into my chest, collapsed and punctured everything, and I was in a real bad way. But on the very same field, where they found your mum's body. Behind there, Steve, behind Steve. And this is the house where I lived as a child. And uh, who would have thought that our journeys, our individual separate journeys, would collide, a bit like that <laughs> motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, at a salsa club, and we would become very, very good friends. And, and I've watched you grow over the years. I, obviously, I knew what happened to you. So um, what was going on for you? What was life like for you back then at the age of 18? Well, I was training to be a motor mechanic. First of all, I did really poorly at school. I, I, I hated right. school because of the bullying. I was really badly bullied. Right. And when I left school, I wanted to become a motor mechanic because I was in, I was involved in motorbikes. Fair enough. So I did, and I was really good at it. In actual fact, I was so good, I was a top student. And I had all these great jobs lined up. Right. One of them being a job in the Formula One pits. And of course, when I lost my right arm at the age of 18, all those job opportunities had gone just like that. So isn't that a really good example of what can happen in life? People, you know, have setbacks, challenges, lose their arm, lose their mum, lose their job. And I think what's really important is that for you and for those that do go on to succeed, is that they find that drive. Where did you find your drive? I think about my drive, really, it, it was a challenge because I'd lost a right arm and I had to learn how to do all these little things, tie my shoelaces, cut my food. So you were forced into it. Almost. I was forced into it, basically. And everything became a problem. But there were problems that needed solving, and I, I realised I became a really good problem solver. Not only that, I really enjoyed it, right. and I used to go out looking for problems to solve. So you became a one-armed, a one-handed motor mechanic. Of your I was own. a one-handed motor, one-armed motor mechanic. Because I was nobody very would employ, good. because nobody would employ you. And I remember going to a few job interviews, and they turned me down point blank. We don't want you. You've got one arm. This was back in the eighties, before the equal opportunities for disabled people. Right. So I thought, well, I'll employ myself. So I worked as a one-handed motor mechanic. I was a break dancer. I was a break dancer. Oh. I was a DJ. I worked in Benidorm, DJ. the south of France, in Leeds, in Mr. Craig's. I was a DJ, in Mr. Craig's, and some big, some big clubs in Leeds. And you started, you started renovating jukeboxes, didn't you? I initially? started renovating. I guess that was to do with your engineering type stuff. I always wanted a jukebox when I was a student, and one just became available. And I thought, right, I'll have this jukebox, but it didn't work. So I bought it and I repaired it. You repaired it with with one arm. Single-handedly. Single-handedly. <laughs> I'm trying to give you that you're one. Try, you're trying to lead me to yeah, that yeah, one, yeah. yeah. I single-handedly so you started repaired renovating, it. you started renovating old jukeboxes. How many of those would you say you've sold? And one-armed bandits. And one-armed bandits. You collect yeah, one-armed yeah, bandits. That, that's oh, not a Martin, pun. That is not a pun. In fact, we'll, we'll show the image now. Uh, okay, and I've so... I've restored hundreds of them. Hundred, you, literally really? hundreds, yeah. And I've sold them to some incredible people around really? the world. Yeah, there you, you won't go. believe it. There you go. See, and you wouldn't have been doing this had you not have lost your arm in the way that you did. No, I'd have been doing other things, I guess. So, you had... A real, you had one big fear in life. What, tell us, tell, tell the uh, Well, I had a number that. of fears. Uh, one of my big fears was my fear of horses. And I thought, well, I'm going to deal with this fear of horses. Yep. So I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll take horse riding lessons. 
like you do. Like you do. And uh, and I loved it. And I thought uh, I really took to it. I thought this is just like riding my motorbike. Right. And I took to it so well. I came fifth in the national dressage qualifiers at Hartbury, which is a big prestigious place oh, in the well UK. Done, Steve. Well done. But my other fear was my fear of flying. You, you, yeah. I was. You're I was, not your own there, my friend. No, I was petrified. I needed three weeks hypnotherapy to fly to Spain to visit some friends. But one day I was on the internet, just surfing around like you do, and I saw this thing on Facebook, and it said, it said flying scholarship for disabled people, and I thought, well, I'll apply for that. You know, why not? I'll give it a go. Anyway. I was awarded it, and I was awarded it by Prince Faisal of Jordan wow. and Sir Stephen Dalton, who was the Chief Air Marshal of the RAF. Okay. And I started flight training down at Kemble, down in the Cotswolds. But Sounds so good. it was great. But the only thing is, for me to start flight training, it wasn't as easy as that. Right. I needed a prosthetic arm making because I didn't have one. Right. Okay. And it took the NHS twelve months to make the per the wow. first prosthetic arm, and when it was finished, it didn't work. Right. So we went back to the drawing board and we made Mark II right. prosthetic arm. Again, it took the NHS another 12 months to make that. When that was finished, that didn't work. <laughs> and I thought, well, what am I going to do now? I'm just going to pull over here, Steve, because I think I know what happened next. Uh, and the reason I know, not just because I'm your friend, but because you've been on the news talking about this. Uh, and uh, I'll just pull over there, put me into park, and um, we don't want any more actions. You made your, well, you designed I and designed, made invented, your own arm. I made my own prosthetic arm. Unbelievable. I mean, have you seen that? This is the bionic man. This is the six million dollar man. Many of you won't know what the six million dollar man uh, is. I'm not the six million dollar man, though. I'm the 30 quid man. <laughs> 30 quid. <laughs> that's all it costs. It's all it costs, 30 yeah. pounds. A lot, a lot that's of just time. Mind blowing, to be honest with you. Um, it, it is. It takes a lot of time in learning new skills, but you know that's part of the that's part of the fun, isn't it? it is, new it skills is. and overcoming those barriers that you think you can't do. I can't do this, but talk, talk, talking about barriers, what was that? I forget the name of it. There's a syndrome that you phantom limb syndrome. Phantom limb syndrome. I never knew about this thing, and the nurses kept saying to me in hospital, "You've lost your right arm, Steve," and I didn't believe them because I could feel it. So and you I can could feel. Can, can, can you feel it? I can now? still feel it now. What? You know, a lot of people have phantom pains or phantom itches. I can just feel my arm. I'm quite lucky. I don't have pains. Sometimes I have an itch. But the more I thought about this phantom limb syndrome, the more I realised that people were suffering from something very similar. Yeah. Phantom barriers. Phantom barriers. These barriers that were stopping people doing things that they really wanted to do and, and stopping them achieving what they really wanted to achieve in life. But the thing is, to feel real, but just like my right arm, aren't really there. Absolutely, Steve. Absolutely. And the sooner that people realise that, the better. So, you started uh, your flying lessons. You built your own arm. I did. So you, you've, so you've. In fact, you've taken me up in the in you've the plane. You've been flying, you've, yeah. You've taken me up in the plane. How was that? Uh, scary, I have to say. <laughs> it's all right going up in a big uh, seven four seven, but you know, a little two seater plane. You don't yeah, feel yeah, secure. Do. They're um, brilliant. They're brilliant views. But I did feel safe in in your capable hands because I knew you'd put the capable hands on. Yeah, no, I, I, I do it. I do it all the time. I say, you know, going to wash my hands. Um, Sorry, Steve. It's all but, right. So I did feel actually secure that you knew what you were doing, and you know, um, and I guess we're coming up now. I, I guess the message is here that there's, 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 there's nothing you can't do. Absolutely nothing. You can anything you want to do, you can do. Yeah, absolutely. Even jumping out of an aeroplane without a parachute. Even jumping out. Of, yes, which you, I thought you couldn't do, but you told me that you you. You can. certainly can. So Steve, video. Steve, that's uh, what's 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 your, what's your, you okay? Yeah, yeah. What's your website address? Should anybody want to get over? My website address is www.stephen with a v hyphen robinson dot com. Dot com. Okay, and you're on Twitter. What um, is your Twitter ID? Steve with one arm. Steve with one arm. How about that, Steve with one arm? Steve, fantastic. Are you are you comfortable there? You no, just, just take my jacket off. If you don't take, mind, Richard. Take it off, Steve. Be, be my guest. Just a bit warm. Be my first guest on Driven. Um, here he is, the, there big you go, the big reveal. The big reveal. We'll, we'll, we'll even move the camera there. Steve Robinson with his. Um, what are these called? Oh, these I, are my epaulets, my I, pilot epaulets. You are now a fully fledged. A fully qualified private pilot. Absolutely fantastic, Steve. Well, it's been a real pleasure having you here on Driven. That was a great uh, journey to success for you, and I hope people are inspired by it. They should be. Thanks, Richard. Uh, and I want to thank you for being here. Thank you. Steve Robinson, the one arm pilot, or one arm Steve on Twitter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Well, how about that? That is an inspirational individual. He is one driven individual, and that was his journey to success. Uh, I hope you're inspired by that. Look out for the next show. I'm looking forward to the next show because I know who it's going to be. Um, I'm Richard McCann. This has been Driven, and it's been a journey to success. (laughs) 